Hi everyone, it's been a while. Uh, welcome to the Rose Hip Island Video Diaries. My name is Hannah and I am recording my videos from Northern Tasmania in Australia. My videos are mostly about knitting and sometimes some other crafty things that I get up to. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I always appreciate all of the views, comments, likes, and any interaction really from viewers. This is some time for me to just sit, time, sit down sorry, and relax and talk about things that I really love and enjoy. It's all about creating and making and uh, sharing inspiration with anyone who's interested to listen. So thank you very much for being here and I hope that I'll have a video uh, this time that you will enjoy. As I've said, it was a while ago since I sat down surrounded by all my makes to share them with you. I have, you know, like most people, just some limited time to to do this life is busy and um, yes well you know it is important to just take some time out relax and just focus on things that you love and then have new energy to keep going with all the other stuff in your busy life so that's what I'll do I'll take a deep breath and um, I just wanted to catch you up on all the stuff that I have been making and it's been quite a few since last time um, and I hope that I'll be able to um, have the time to share them all with you. So normally what I would do would be to um, go through things that I've finished and then things that I've been working on or that I am currently working on and then a bit of life updates and, and things like that. I think my last video I was focusing on, on the one thing that I was working on. Um, this time, what I thought I'll do, just sort of thinking about what I have to share with you when I've been writing it down this morning, is that I'll, I'll do a section on, on socks, a section on mittens, a section on shawls, and then some jumpers and cardigans. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but I thought um, it might be to be able to fit this video making into my day I might have to do a recording of each section separately um, I'm in my kitchen living area space today it's just I have the house to myself and it's a nice and sunny day and it's just nice and warm here and my studio does not really have any heating and um, it's just nice and cozy in here today so um, that's what I, I, I thought I'd, I'd use this space and yes I might just be able to come and sit here for a bit a few times today and go through different sort of sections of the video that um, I wanted to make we'll see how it goes sometimes I just get carried away and I can't stop talking um, it might be that I get interrupted or I run out of time who knows but I thought if I don't start, if I don't just jump into it, it will never happen. It's um, mid-June and yes, I'm in Northern Tassie. It's winter here, but yes, it's a nice sunny day today, so it's all good. So I have been creating and making quite a few things in the last few months as a way to um, relax and just uh, I guess a bit of a mindfulness thing for me. I think I was really busy making jumpers and cardigans for quite some time. It was what I was focusing my crafting time on. I have recently moved to more towards smaller projects and um, that's what I'll start with. Let's start with some socks. Oh, but first I'll show you something that I have been sewing because I have been doing quite a bit of sewing. I did a bit of sewing over summer and I have continued that quite a bit um, because I have not been dying. And I should tell you this now. You can find me as Rosie Island on Instagram 
and on Ravelry. There's a Facebook page, Ferocive Island, and you can find that in connection to my profile, Hannah Westmore. And um, I also have a hand dyeing business, and you can find that at rosiveisland.com. But um, I haven't been dying for the past six months or so due to some health reasons. Um, so I've had more time for sewing and other things. So, sewing. I made this bag uh, so from, from some fabric that I had. And I actually found this pattern in a um, thrift shop, an op shop. Um, I think it was $3. Um, got that and just made a bag out of my uh, fabric that I had at home. This one is a sort of a canvasy green fabric that I had from when I was making a lot of bags a while or some time ago. I used that thicker fabric for the base of the bag. And these colorful ones actually I got for making um, dresses for my daughters. Um, so there were some left over. And yes, yeah, there's a, a pocket inside and yeah, it's just a funny, um, a cool construction with the handles. There's pockets on the outside. So I think um, I like I like it. I may, made it in crazy fabrics because I just wanted to make it and give it a try. It was quite a bit of time that I spent on it, but I would like to maybe make one in more neutral colours. I think that would be great. So now I'm just using it as a sort of collective bag for all my different project bags of knitting that I'm working on which works really well I guess it could be a good beach bag yeah it's good it even has a little loop for hooking things on inside the bag anyway so yes I've been making a few little um sewing projects as well okay let's start with a pair of socks that I made it quite a while ago, just normal vanilla socks. I normally have a pair of vanilla socks on the go for weight room knitting, car knitting, commuting knitting. Um, I had this ball of an opal yarn. It's opal, what was it called? Best Friends. I've had this for quite some time and I thought it was time to use it up and I made this pair of socks. So my socks for my feet uh, and with my gauge of knitting is normally 56 stitches on a two millimeter needle. I like the nine inch cirques and, and I do a fish lips kiss heel. So they're just my normal standard socks and I'm lucky that this um, size of sock also fits my mum and my mother-in-law and also my oldest daughter but she won't really wear them but yes I can just do that and I just sort of yeah add them to the gift pile or to my own sock drawer so I did those and then I um my youngest daughter who's nine and a half she really likes my handmade anything really and I have made her quite a few of little um short thick socks like slipper socks um, and she wears them all the time and i thought i wanted to try something different similar but different and there was a pattern i think it was on sale or free for a short period of time and that was the the rain cloud socks by lily pearl design um and i made a pair so it's it has this cable down the front and I had some of this yellow sparkly sock yarn as a leftover it's a yarn that I got from Kathy's Fibre a dyer in Australia um, so I made a pair of, of those for her and I normally don't do a lot of patterning and things on socks um, because I want Basically, I want my socks to be easy things I can just pick up and not have to look at a chart or anything. If I'm going to spend focused time on knitting, I want it to be for, 
I guess something something where people can actually see the work that I've put into it, like you know, a garment or a shawl. For socks, personally, I just think it's a little bit of a waste of time. But um, I did really enjoy making them, and in the past, I have made a lot of of socks that have a lot of details and stuff on them. I just find that I have a lot of them, and I don't really um, get any more out of that time than I get out of socks that are just vanilla socks. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, I did do these and put the work in, and yes, I'm really happy with them. Um, they were not hard to make or anything, but yeah, you just have to sort of keep more of an eye on them um, to not get errors. They have not been worn yet. They do look very sort of slim, but they do stretch quite a bit. So I can hand them over now for being worn. So that was those. And then I made another um, um, pair of gift um, socks that um, are going to be a present. Um, and it's these. They're um, big DK weight socks in a larger size. And this yarn, I really like this yarn. You can see it's a tweedy and it, this red is so beautiful. I think the colorway is Garnet, I think they called it. And this yarn is from Spotlight. It's called Four Seasons Montana. Um, and it's, um, it, it's actually, quite a good quality yarn. It does have, I think the Tweety Beats are acrylic or polymid and then it's wool. And I figured that with that mix, they would make lasting socks. And then when I knitted it up, I actually liked it so much that I was thinking about making a cardigan or a garment out of this. But, um, for a yarn that I purchased at Spotlight, I found that it was actually quite expensive um, if I wanted to buy you know, a, a, um, a larger quantity of it. So I never did um, purchase any more for making a garment. Um, I actually went and, and bought some rustic yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills instead, which I found find being really good wool and um, yeah, at a good price. And um, yes, so I never, but if the Montana uh, yarn at Spotlight comes up for sale, um, or if I find something that I really want to have a tweed wool yarn for, um, I might still consider getting some more. But at the moment, the stash is full, so not happening at this stage. So that's those um, socks. It's just you know, plain fish lips, kiss, fish lips kiss heel and uh, um, a bit of one, two by one ribbon. So that's been my sock knitting um, for the last little while and I do not have any socks on my needles at the moment because I have another small project that I have been focusing on. Okay, I had to go and grab a glass of water. I think um, I'm talking quickly. <laughs> um, so yes, I needed some water. So I wanted to keep um, telling you about some smaller projects that I've been working on. Uh, and next up are mittens. And I did quite a few mittens and beanies and things like that a while back, really enjoyed it. But then I got a bit um, overwhelmed by how many I had. And you know, I only have two hands and one head. And in all honesty, honesty, um, don't really have the need for them very much. Um, so I just stopped making that and got into the whole jumper and, and cardigan 
um, world instead. Uh, and I, you know, I made lots for my daughters when they were younger, and I've, I've made some not that far, you know, not that long ago, but um, you know, they, they have what they need, really. Um, I'm sure if I was still living in, in Sweden, um, you know, I'd, I'd need that sort of um, stuff a whole lot more and I would um, probably make more as well. I don't really have many other people that I can give mittens and beanies and things like that to. Same with shawls. Um, but anyway, I did have um, a request to make mittens and that sort of got me all, um, I guess, interested and enthusiastic about making mittens again. And, you know, I love colour work and mittens are a really great thing for colour work and trying out colours and different yarn and different patterns. And it's a nice small project that has a lot of, you know, a lot of fun at knitting. So my sister, she asked if I could make her a new pair of mittens. I've made her two or three pairs of colour work mittens in the past. And one pair that I made for her was the Till Death pattern by Stephanie Lotman, which was a mystery Halloween knit along that I test knitted for. And I made her a pair in white gum wool yarn. And unfortunately, she put them in the washing machine and they were felted. So she asked if I could make her a new pair. And I thought, you know, yeah, I've made them before. A lot of work. They had a few colours in them, lots of ends to weave in. Um, but I thought if someone actually asked me to do something, you know, a family member, really, um, and I have the time, I have the material, and I don't really need to make anything for myself, you know, then why not? But um, I checked if it would be okay to just make them in two colors instead of the, I think, four or five that are in the original pattern, and that was fine. And because the, the last pair got felted, uh, I decided to use yarns that were machine washable, and I made a new pair of Till Death, and I'll put them on and show you. Here they are. So these are two mittens that are the same, which means that when you put them on, you have, you know, a woman ghost and a man ghost. <laughs> so I made them in two colors only. And what I use, was a, a one of my hand dyed um, sock yarn which is the dark one and it looks black or charcoal but it's actually a green that I over dyed with black so um, she wanted them to be black and white but I, I, I used that and I thought it just looked like sort of a, a very dark grey or black but it does have a little bit of the green coming out in some lights but I, I think that's just nice I think it just br brings a little bit more depth to them and then the neutral white color that I used is actually um, a skein or a ball of yarn that I got from Bendigo Woolen Mills when I purchased something else they had a limited edition of a yarn called Tranquility which was a sock yarn but it has 5% silk in it as well so it's I think 75 wool 20 nylon and 5% silk and I, I, I purchased one 200 gram ball of an eight ply DK weight and one 200 gram ball of this white four ply um, in, the, in the light color. And the, the DK weight one I used for a pair of little slipper socks for, um, for my mum that I gave her for Christmas. So I have those, I did some mistakes here, or not mistakes, but the tension was not great the whole time. The reason for that is actually also that I used, I decided to um, use my flexi tips. Do I have them in here? Probably not. Let's see if I can find them. 
These ones, the flexi, I think they're Addy flexi tips. You have three of these that you knit on and I had not been knitting on them for quite some time. So it took me a while to get the tension right and sort of get comfortable in my color work knitting. But I have them and they're ready for my sister and she won't need them for a while because it's summer in Sweden at the moment, but I'll have them ready. And um, when I had finished those, I was just, so into the mitten knitting, mitten knitting, and uh, I wanted to do something else, and I decided to cast on another pair, and I knew that my mum was interested in maybe a new pair of mittens. I've made her a few before. Um, I cast on a, a thinner pair in some sort of Norwegian mittens, but. Um, I can't get the tension very tight as per the pattern, so they just ended up being huge. Then I thought I'll just do a kid's size, a kid's pattern, um, but then they ended up being a bit small. Um, in the end, I thought I'll just go and grab a DK weight uh, yarn and pattern and do that. It, I had troubles with the fingering weight um, to get the right gauge for the pattern. so. I found a free pattern by a Swedish designer, um, Erika uh, Guselius, she's Dörderjök, which means death cuckoo, I think, in English. Um, she has a few patterns. This was a free patterns, um, free pattern available on Ravelry. And I grabbed some Rauma in the grey that I had in my stash. And I had recently dyed up some non wash New Zealand wool that I was trialing to dye for my my shop for my business and I sort of did a like, little bit of testing of this and then I had to stop dyeing um, so it never really nothing really ever happened with it but my whole reasoning for wanting to bring a yarn like this into my business was to be able to do really good color work with the local yarn and not having to go for the Norwegian Roma or you know something from Europe. I quite like the thought of having a locally made product that can give the same results um, because that's something I've struggled with myself to find for things that I want to make. So I had these two in my stash and I cast on these and they're called Heidi and I have made one. You see, I've just used my flexi tips as the holder for the thumb stitches. So there's Heidi. I made it a little bit shorter. I just took, I think I took out like three rounds and I didn't do the very pointy tip. I did a kitchener stitch um, when I thought it was a nice shape and size. So I made those. I have to put the thumb in and I um, maybe 75% of the way on the second one. So they're um, really fun. And it's, uh, have, I have quite a bit of DK weight, and mostly fingering weight wool in non soup wash um, wool suitable for color work. I have a lot of it. And if I was going to make jumpers out of all of it, um, I would have so many color work jumpers and really I, I already have i counted the other day um i have you know i don't have enough jumpers to wear a new one every week of the year but um at this rate it won't be very long until i have that many so i don't really need to cast on a lot of color work jumpers i also find that in my my current um, situation with work and everything, I don't really have that many opportunities to wear a lot of color work, with some exemptions. I um, exceptions. I I can make it work, but maybe not the Icelandic jumper. So um, anyway. 
what I was going to say is that all of that yarn that I have in different colors, I just have to start seeing it as I can, you know, break it down, maybe hold it double or triple and make other things, make accessories and make things for other people. So that was something that I did with that one. So that was the, the mitten section for this video. I have one more accessory to share with you today and that is a project that was on the needles for close to, to one year from casting it on and that is the bromeliad, bromeliad shawl by Dominic Trad and here it is. I have modified it slightly and I'll, I'll just tell you soon I'll just um, tell you what I've made this out of this was a pattern that I started on during a retreat in uh, Launceston Northern Tass June 2022 and I took a, a workshop by Dominic Trad and we talked about different shore shapes it was great and I cast this on I think in class the um, yarns that I have used are similar to the ones in the pattern example. Uh, what I used was a grey sock yarn dyed by me and then this uh, variegated bright colours dyed by me as well. It was a um, scam from a advent calendar and I've actually also made a jumper using it. Um, so in this section here you stripe those two and then this section here with the, the lace and two colors maybe it's hard to see um, the the dark color is a gray glitter sock yarn from Kathy's fiber so it's the same as the yellow socks that I made for my daughter and I actually bought those two colors to be project together and I did make a pair of socks using the two colors together but I have since used it it's the yarn that never ends, you know, I've used them for a few different things. I don't have a lot of the purple left now, I still have quite a bit of yellow. Um, but yes, I used those um, three colours and I think I did like the first two sections a year ago and then it was sitting for a bit and I did a bit of the next section and then it was just sitting and sitting and sit sitting and I decided it, if it's ever going to get done I just had to do it so I had some time to focus on this uh, and finish it and the modification I did and that was due to not really knowing if I had enough yarn um, it's meant to have this pico edge along the whole um, bottom of the shawl but when I had done this amount I was worried that I would not have enough to do the pico the whole way and I thought about it and I thought I don't want to just keep going and then have half of it pico and other half not pico so I and I thought should I just rip it back and not do the pico edging or do it in a different color but then I decided that I do it um, at the start so that when I wear it you see those Picos there and then I just bound off a normal edging and then I started doing the pico again at the end so that my my two ends that are showing when I wear it have that edging um, and in the end I had a tiny bit of the yarn left um, which I prefer to not you know be able to follow through with the plan that I had. Oh, you need you need a bit of um, you need a mirror and a bit of time to adjust it so it looks nice when you wear it. But yes, I'm super happy um, to have this complete. Um, I like the shape and size of it. I like the colours and now I think um, because I also had a look at all my shorts the other day <laughs> and same as the the jumpers and cardigans i can wear um 
you know, close to a new shawl every week of, of the year. Um, I have not been doing a lot of shawls recently, just for that reason, I find that I have enough shawls to, um, you know, keep me happy. <laughs> but what I have found recently is that I have a lot of bright, happy colors. I have a lot of greens, blues, purples and pinks. I have one grey, I think, but I don't really have anything neutral or things that would go with anything or more office wear. I mean, I like to wear a pop of colour, but, you know, not all the time. So I've actually put aside some rosy green wool that I bought from a D-stash in four quiet neutral colours. I put them aside um, with a shawl pattern in mind that I have queued on Ravelry under my profile. So my next shawl is going to be a more grey, um, muted colour scheme um, shawl. So that's coming up because I still like making shawls and if I can make something that's different to what I already have, then that's great. So that was the shawl, Bromeliad by Dominic Trad. And then we have come to the, the last section of projects that I wanted to talk to you about today. And because I forgot to do this before, I'll tell you what I'm wearing because it's a jumper and jumpers and cardigans are what we're going to talk about now. So this is a jumper that I don't think I've worn in a video before. And I haven't taken a lot of project photos of me wearing stuff in the past six months just because of, of that I don't, I haven't felt comfortable doing that. And so I don't think there's any photo of this being worn anywhere. This is a jumper that I made using the stripes pattern by Andrea Maori and I think it's the third one I'm making. I did make a striped stripes for my first version and then this then I made a tweed one and this is the second tweed one. Uh, it, I just find that it's with my gauge and everything and how I like to knit um, you know detention and everything this just is a good fit on my body. Uh, I like that I can just need to sleeve straight, just take them in a little bit at the end. I like how I can get a good straight um, body and make it a, a, a length that I find suits me and my clothes well. The yarn that I use for this is a, um, a um, I, I have no, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I found this at the Salvo's um, secondhand shop and I think I found 10 50 gram skeins and they were like a dollar each um, and it is it was a funny yarn it's like a summer blend I don't know if it's plastic or if it's viscose or what it could be but it, it was that knitted chain like an i-cord chain that has different bits in it in different blue colors so it has this super textured tweedy feel and um, it's 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 really nice it feels really good to wear I haven't tried it out in really hot weather yet um, but I think maybe it will work better than a woolen jumper uh, and even though it might seem a bit boring to always knit the same pattern I do think that I will keep using this pattern just to show off off different yarns. I have some more yarn that I have bought secondhand um, that is a bit fun um, textured crazy yarn and I think this works well for that. So that's what I'm wearing and I have some other ones that I have shown you before. So finally finally my Illuminate by Andrea Maori. so another Andrea Maori pattern um, is all done and I've started actually weaving all the ends and finish finish things 
and not just leaving them in a pile somewhere. So yes, it's finished. Um, did I do anything special with this? No. The, the yarn that I used is a green Sölje from Hillesville in Norwegian fingering weight yarn. So that's the green. And the red and pink is a, it's just a one, I had two skeins of it, but it's just a one yarn that had a long transition of color from the d quite deep red to the light pink. So it went light pink to red to light pink, and I had two skeins of that. So I used one skein here, the light pink to the red to the light pink again. And when I got there, and I think there was a little bit of red at the end, and then I got there and I decided to do the sleeves. Um, and I did one sleeve from the outside of the ball and then one sleeve from the inside of the ball to get them both going pink to red and then I had the red there and I continued on the body with the red because it had started to go into the red something like that it was a while ago I can't remember but I managed to to get it looking um good I think I have actually not worn it um don't know why I, I should have it out to wear now it's cold enough for it um the Sölje was a recent well relatively recent yarn in my stash but the pink one is a yarn from Ulcentrum in Sweden and I actually had a look in Ravelry and I added it to my stash in 2008 it was just waiting for the right project basically and I think this was definitely it so illuminate I know because this is not all symmetric all this color work uh, I know when I looked at the Ravelry project notes a few people have sort of recounted to get it all symmetrical but I didn't worry about that and I do feel like the neckline is quite wide, but it does look okay when it's on. So I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. So that's a nice woolly jumper. And uh, yeah, I guess in colors that I don't really have. If, if I lived in a part of the world that had winter at Christmas, this would probably be my Christmas jumper. But uh, I will have to have Christmas in July if I want to wear it for Christmas. So that was that one. Um, then I don't know if I've shown you any of these other ones. But another one that I made that was a, a quicker knit uh, from yarn that I've been trying different things with. Um, this yarn is a Bendigo Woolen Mills limited edition. Um, it's an wool alpaca bamboo recycled fibers I think so it has a little bit of tweedy bits in different colors in it I think fossil this was the colorway fossil and what I made based I just checked my my gauge that I had what fabric I wanted I wanted to make a top-down cardigan that I steaked um, so the cardigan pattern that I found was um, a, a pattern called Kranz, which means wreath. And it's by Maya Karlsson, a Swedish designer. And I just made this and I found some buttons on Av Avo buttons on Etsy. They're wooden buttons. Um, it, it came out really nice, but this yarn is a super wash yarn and I knitted it not very tight. So it, it, it doesn't look very structured or um, I'm not sure how to explain it. It looks more like an at home cardigan, really. Um, it doesn't have that like, um, 
fresh tight look I'm not <laughs> you know what I mean um, I wouldn't wear it with you know a cocktail dress or a ball gown it's more of a just wearing it with jeans or tracksuit pants at home but it was um, nice to use some of that yarn and I've, I've worn this I've worn this cardigan a lot and I was happy with the buttons I bought a few buttons from Avo buttons that's that one I still have more of this yarn and I also have a red one and a blue one of this yarn so I have to I, I, I have a few yarns that I've had in my stash for a while that I really like and I know that I can never get hold of them again I should make something out of them but now I'm starting to think I might like with this one I've, I've made a garment out of it and I still have Do I have 400 grams or 600 grams? Like I have enough for another garment. Do I really need to hold on to that or should I just de-stash it? I have to have a think about that. So that's that, comes, And it's from a um, book by Maya Carlson called Kofto Cardigans in Swedish. I don't think it's available in any other language. And the original does have like a color work pattern, like a wreath. Um, on there which I did not put in and then I have another finished cardigan and I talked about in my little video last time that I wanted to make big thick cardigan for my daughter because I went out and I bought her a loose fitting v-neck cardigan um, in you know 100% acrylic to you know not expensive but you know I could have purchased yarn good quality yarn to make her a cardigan um, for well it would have cost me a lot more I guess but um, I just I felt a bit bad about spending good money on a acrylic jumper for her that I could basically make myself but you know it was the time it was definitely um, the, the time to make it you know, it would be a lot <laughs> times money um, so two things with that purchase was that I felt like I should make her these things if she wants them and it also let me let go of my I should only use wool because um, if I can go and buy her a jumper in acrylic I can make her a jumper in acrylic and I for some reason it just made me relax about not using you know plastic and you know it shouldn't I, I should I should I, I'm still very much aware of what I'm doing with what materials I'm using but sometimes I've just let go of that now Yeah, it's just making choices and being aware of the choices you make and if my daughter wants the acrylic jumper and if she won't wear my homemade woolen jumpers I guess meeting somewhere half you know in between is me making her something out of not 100% wool anyway it made me go a little bit crazy um, and not purchasing new plastic wool but you know finding stuff in op shops and stuff for example so I made her this but it's now mine actually it got a bit too crazy for her this is the hillside cardigan by now I'll have to change my page by Ashley Hills uh, it's a free pattern I knitted on five millimeter needles using three strands of yarn held together um, and it actually came out really nice I had some buttons in my button stash they're a bit crazy so it looks very retro something I never thought I'd make or wear I've actually worn this in the office one day it um, it is actually it's a nice shape and it's a nice thick jacket cardigan and you can see here on the wall 
or maybe you can't. But there's a white and there's a brown and then there's this loopy, mohairy type yarn. So what they are, I'll show you. This is the brown one. And I think that's 100% acrylic. Not sure, I just bought four skeins of this in the in the bag don't know what they are same with this white beige color probably 100 percent acrylic um four skeins and then from an op shop a while ago i bought this funny looking cone and it i think it might be mohair is that bucle um mohair stuff which yeah browns and blues so those three held together created this fabric so it has a lot of you know it's mild but it also has a lot of texture to it and that that was really fun and i was surprised at you know it was actually quite easy and fast to make with this picking up this um, neckline and everything. Yeah. So that's that one. It's definitely more of a jacket than a cardigan. And then for the very last thing is what I'm currently working on for most of my making and crafting time. And that is the cardigan that I talked about last time. And it is this one. And this started out as the um, My Mood of the Day cardigan, which is a pattern by Maruma Knits. I chose this pattern really because of the gauge that I got with the yarn that I wanted to use. And it was a free pattern. And I just needed a stitch count really. So this is a little bit of a tricky project and this is going to look and sound bad. But what I have are three plastic bags with two balls of yarn in each. My pink, my purple and my beige brown and um, because there's a little bit of yarn management happening here to make it work um, so it's just a straight top down and I in the pattern is completely different it's I think just blocks of color stripes like three different colors but I wanted to stripe the different colors but i didn't want the striping to make me have to cut the yarn between the stripes so i've actually um where have i done that oh for the body because i knitted back and forth and um, for the body i just sort of twisted the yarn along the front so not have to cut it i did that until i thought it was a good length and then i actually did just the garter border for the bottom so it's going to be quite a short like cardigan a uh, dress cardigan um and i'll pick up bottom button bands and then i've i've completed one sleeve i just need it straight and then here with this project caper is i've started to decrease a bit and then again i did just a garter for the cuff I now have maybe, I don't know, five to 10 centimeters left on the second sleeve. And then I have to pick up the button band. Now I'm thinking about, should I have made this neckline garter as well and then just make a garter button band? I'm not sure. Um, but I am very happy with these yarns and how they're working up and the fabric they're creating. It actually looks really good on. I've tried it on, very happy with it. And I should say that the yarns that I'm using are um, a, the wool, one strand is Marl from 
spinning yarn weaving tails, which is the same as the Holst Garn Super Soft, I believe, or very similar. So I, I have quite a few of these in my stash and I had a bit of these three colors, a bit of each. I still you know, have lots. I'll soon finish my cardigan. I have almost um, 100 gram left of each of the colors. So my stash busting didn't quite work out. But what I did was that I purchased some horse garn Titicaca, um, which is the second strand that I'm using in each color. And this is an alpaca yarn, a lace weight alpaca yarn. And putting those two together just creates a much softer um, feel, but it's still a very lightweight fabric. So I got that Titicaca to go with what I had in my stash to use up the stash into something that created a different fabric to what I had created before when I've used that same yarn for jumpers. So this was a bit of a test to um, to test the Titicaca and to see how it went with the yarn that I had because I have more of that yarn to make um, I have like a teal color of that mile from spinning yarn weaving tail. So I got some Titicaca to go with that for another cardigan or jumper. But this was a test and just a way to use up these colors that I had in my stash. And I guess I have to keep going with and making something else because I still have lots left. So this is where my focus is at the moment to get this one done. And I'm guessing that really it's it's really not the pattern that it was when I started because the only thing really that I've used from the pattern is, you know, how many stitches to cast on at the top. Everything else I've just made up just based on how, you know, what my vision was, I guess. So I'll um, keep working on that and I think I need to make something one color after this because doing all these different colors is crazy. <laughs> okay, well, with a few breaks and interruptions throughout this video, I think I have managed to squeeze in all the things that I wanted to talk about. Oh, actually, maybe just having a look here, I might show you one more thing that I made um, <laughs> because it's a bit hilarious. I wanted to um, make a new project bag and I wanted to make, you know, like a, a quilted look project bag because I'm always so uh, impressed by the ones that I see uh, on Instagram and wherever. And I'm always tempted to, or I've always wanted to have one and purchase one, but I can't make myself, I can't justify buying one because I have all the fabric, all the material to make you know, not only one, but several. So I wanted to just give it a try and and I went to be rogue and I didn't use a pattern or anything, just had a look at a few things online and made this huge bag. Because uh, what I did was I just, I made this sort of patchwork, uh, I made these squares and um, sort of put some purple on the sides and then made a, a purple base um, and then I've, I've sewn, I've quilted on the machine just with straight lines. I saw a bag like that um, and I, I lined it and everything and did uh, drawstrings and everything. Um, and it's really nice. I, I mean, don't look too closely because the stitching is not great. But, and it has quite a thick, um, um, what is it called? The inner lining. Um, so it's very sturdy. But the funny thing is, it's like, it's so tall. It would probably, the size would probably be good if it was only that bit. <laughs> so it's, a bit like a sailor sack, knitting sailor sack. Is that what they're called? Those big things or like a laundry bag or something. Um, I guess it could also be one of those bags where you put lots of other bags inside. So I made it. I now know what I need to do to maybe make it more um, appropriate size 
bag. But it was fun. It was fun. Um, so I have that. So I've yeah, been making. I've, I've been making a few dresses and things, and really enjoying um, making those. I am too scared to venture into making more difficult things, so I keep making my, you know, knit, um, dresses out of niche materials for me and for my daughter. So I made the bags. Um, have I made any? That's basically what I'm doing. Um, my daughter will only wear tracksuit pants that I have made her. So I've tried to make her some more of, of those. And I made her some hoodies out of scuba knits, which was fun. Um, but I do want to make, you know, I would really like to be able to make a dress that I feel like I can wear more places than just the beach <laughs> at home. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, winter is not so much a sewing time for me because, as I said before, the studio is not the cosiest in winter. It can be if I, you know, just need to spend some time there and set it up properly. But uh, sewing is more for spring, summer, autumn. Also, well, mostly because of the light. It's just more natural daylight, which I find very useful when doing sewing. So this time of the year is more knitting for me. But I do have, I have all the materials I need for both sewing and knitting. So I'll just keep working my way through all the stuff. I am um, not saying no to buying new stuff, but I need to, I, I'm not going out just, you know, buying single skeins um, because they're pretty. I need to, find something really unusual or something really specific that I can make from it. So um, that's what's happening. And if I start feeling too stressed about being able to use up my stash, I might do a bit of a de-stash, but we'll see. For now, I'm quite happy with where I'm at with everything. It's been great catching up with you um, in this video. I um I might give you a short sort of more personal update or life update if if you just want to see the knitting and stuff. It's been great having you here. Hope I'll see you soon again. And um, for those of you that are interested in what's happening more uh, in life and with my health and stuff, I um if you don't. No, I might just, you know, there's no no need for just sort of not being straightforward, I guess, unless there's someone out there that's sensitive. I hope there's no, no children watching, not that anything's going to be bad. Um, but um, you might know that I was diagnosed with breast cancer in you know, end of November last year, and I've just been through like different surgeries and treatments i've just um two weeks post a five month um chemo treatment and um everything's going great i mean considering you know the what's going on um you know i'm i'm doing I'm doing fine. I never see, you know, you know, cancer is a wide range of things. And um, I guess for someone who had a diagnosis, I am, you know, I'm lucky just because of what my diagnosis was. And, you know, I have great teachers and early detection, and everything like that. Not teachers, doctors, my gosh. Um. Yeah, so everything's good. I just have to get through the treatment and my cancer was basically gone after my surgery beginning of the year. So it's all just, you know, precautionary, making sure that, you know, nothing's hiding and lurking in my body. So I've done my chemo. I did not, I mean, you get knocked out, definitely. Um, but it could have been so, so, so much worse than it was. So I'm feeling quite lucky about that. 
I had my priority uh, priorities and I you know kept with them and and um, was fine and now I've had a bit of a break I'm starting to feel more like myself again and I'm going to have July off and then I'm going to keep going with treatment and then it's um, radiation therapy for six weeks um, so basically this whole year is just going to be about um, treating my body <laughs> and then recovering and getting better and focusing on getting strong and healthy really and I'm trying to have that in my mind the whole time and just prioritize those things that will you know get me to that goal um, so I have not been doing any dying for my business because it's just not been high on my priority list I do have a you know, office job that I'm really enjoying and um, it's been working really well with the treatment and stuff so um, I'm very lucky in many ways and um, you know knitting and sewing is also one of the things that I'm really grateful that I have that I, I had all the resources for working on those things I can't imagine um, what it would be like if you don't really have something like that to focus on on the side of work and this on the side of treatment if you're going through something like I am um, you know even having the mind space to start a craft from scratch and being a total beginner I think it would be very good for you but I think it would be very hard already having all the knowledge skills and resources to just jump into it as a way of escaping and a way of healing i guess has been so good and so that's also something that i'm really thankful for but really nothing else new it's just still old boring stuff so um yeah i'm happy i've had this opportunity today to catch up with you all and um, again i'd like to I would like to say thank you so very much for joining me here and for um, spending some of your time with me. I appreciate all the subscribes and likes and feedback, anything you send my way. I do read everything, receive everything, and I'm just not at this point yet at the stage where I interact a whole lot on social media. I'll get there, but um, just know that I appreciate everything. So thank you so very much. And I am going to sign out for this time and I really hope to see you soon. Take care everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye.